<clears throat> Hello, guys. Uh, welcome to the seventh lesson. Uh, today we will talk about uh, reverse proxy. Uh, and uh, so let's start in. I will switch off my camera and share my screen. One moment. So, mm -hmm. uh, so what's our plan for today's lesson? Uh, uh, so, first of all, let's remember what was done on the previous lesson. Uh, we provisioned uh, EC2 instance in uh, uh, in availability zone. We provisioned uh, VPC, all network infrastructure for this uh, EC2 instance, like row table, internet gateway, uh, and so on and so on. And uh, now, uh, we would like to secure our HTTP connection, and we are going to secure it with uh, a TLS uh, HTTPS. Uh, for this purpose, uh, we are going to use Elastic Load Balancer. Uh, so, uh, what we are going to build today is uh, user. Uh, will be routed uh, through road 53 service to uh, elastic load balancer there will be offloaded a tls inspection and then traffic will be forwarded to ec2 instance and um, so let's uh, show you my uh, files, uh, these files which we were created before. Uh, so, as you remember, we have created uh, a compute uh, resource with EC2 instance network resource with uh, VPC, subnets, gateway, row table, and uh, we have security uh, file with all. Uh, security groups uh, we have created security group for ec2 instance and for elastic file system and also we have created uh, a file system efs and attached uh, this efs to uh, ec2 instance and uh, the code which uh, I was I showed you the last lesson. It is actually working. So let's have a check it. Mm. So uh, we have our Jenkins on this IP address, and uh, you can see there is a initial configuration setup uh, was proceeded before. Let me log in. So you can see it, it has been configured and uh, first of all, what I'm going to do is to uh, destroy uh, only EC2 instance with, uh, with the name instance one, uh, just to check that uh, state file are persistent in uh, Elastic file system. Let's do Terraform destroy. Uh, 
And while it is destroying, I would like to say that if you will be, okay, let's uh, build it once again. And uh, what I'd like to mention is that if you uh, are going to use uh, a GitHub uh, to keep your files, please keep in mind uh, to use a git ignore and exclude uh, Terraform state uh, files. Okay. So instance has been created. Uh, let's connect to it. And as you remember on, from previous lesson, we have made some echo uh, with the states to log file. And I have updated a little bit uh, to be more readable, add some special symbols. And uh, let's have a look at this file. Okay. If it, and if we don't see log file, it means that the first uh, uh, step is not ready yet. So, let's get it. Okay, now we have log.txt file. So now we can see how our press, uh, our uh, steps from user data file is applying on this uh, instance. Docker in engine installed, uh, username Ubuntu added to Docker group, ownership has been changed, uh, Docker Compose has been created, EFS file system has been mounted, and finally Docker Compose has been started. So now we can check it, copy paste. Remember that we used port 8080. Okay, and now we have our Jenkins with all the configuration persistent in EFS. So great. Uh, let's move forward. Uh, now we need to uh, implement reverse proxy and uh, elastic load balancer would help us with this, uh, with this task. So first of all, let's create new file and I would call it the uh, load balancer .tf. And uh, for this purpose, I would suggest to use a module. It um, module has all needed uh, resources included, and we will call this module ELB one. It will be inside subnet CIDR one, and uh, it is it is it requires a security group as well. Uh, we will make it a bit later. Uh, then we need to add the listener field. So we'll load balancer listening port 80 and instance port is different. It's 8080, we don't change it. Then we need a health check uh, for load balancer to know that our instance is ready for traffic. It's also used port 8080. Uh, 
then a number of instance one and uh, we define a list of instance for this load balancer and of course we need to add some tags okay so uh, uh, as i mentioned before we need to add a security group for load balancer and we are going to security file and add the security group for load balancer. Uh, here we go. And uh, here uh, we allow every we allow traffic uh, outside everything, and for ingress traffic, we allows only ports which be defined in. Uh, variable ports ELB from any IP address. So we are going to vars and here we need to add new variable with the port list. Okay, here is the port list. We will be using both of these ports now we will try this port and a bit later we will be using a secure connection okay let's save it security is ready So, so now we have created every, everything we needed and let's apply this configuration. So what we are going uh, to create is uh, ELB uh, module. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, we don't know URL of our um, elastic load balancer. And I would suggest to add uh, some output. Uh, output is ELB DNS name. Uh, we use module, module ELB, and uh, we'll find ELB DNS name. So if we save it, and if we run Terraform apply again, okay, we can see that uh, this is our DNS name of Elastic Load Balancer. Let's check it. Let's open new tab. Okay, that's great. Uh, so now we have DNS name uh, for of Elastic Load Balancer, and uh, uh, what you see here that the connection is not secure. It's HTTPS connection. It's not secure, and they're going to make it secure. So we need. HTTPS means instead of uh, a simple uh, HTTP. And let's go back to our code. And, and so um, we need to provision SSL certificate and offload SSL TLS inspection to 
Elastic Load Balancer. Uh, for this purpose, uh, uh, we need, first of all, to register a domain name, then create a SSL TLS certificate and perform this certificate validation using road a 53 DNS record. Then we will need to update Elastic Load Balancer to use SSL TLS certificate. Of course, then we need to create DNS A record for domain name and link it to ELB FQDN and uh, provision this infrastructure with Terraform. So first of all, let me log in to AWS Web Console. One moment. I will enter my credentials here. So here we are. Uh, going to road 53 and uh, I have registered uh, one domain before you can register whatever you want uh, here is a quick and simple process uh, just click register domains I can you can choose uh, a name uh, FQDN you want to use. Uh, for example, I choose this FQDN. And uh, there are some simple process. We want to go dive into it. Uh, I just show you that it is already exist in my account. Okay. So let's go to our code. First of all, let's change our load balancer. Ah, no, no, first, first. What, what do we need first? Mm. Domain name. Let's create file certificate.tf and here we will create uh, some uh, needed uh, resources for HTTPS. First of all, we need resource uh, certificate itself because certificates, uh, certificate is uh, a key of HTTPS and uh, we will call this certificate cert1 and uh, it will be using our my domain name which i just uh, show you in my aws account but of course you can choose uh, another resource to host your dns name and then just attach it to AWS road 53. Uh, so as I created uh, uh, a certificate with uh, a domain name, I have to create variable here with my domain name, which I just show you in my AWS account. 
אוקיי, זן. Uh, then I will create road 53 zone uh, with the name main and uh, it will be attached uh, also to my DNS record. Here it is. Uh, we have created DNS record and its name record one. And uh, uh, here we use the name of uh, certificate domain validation and what is important uh, it is inside uh, our road 53 zone with the id of zone main uh, so what next and next we need to add the certificate validation using the dns uh, record uh, this resource looks like this. Uh, we're using our certificate and uh, uh, a validation records function. Uh, it takes uh, our road 53 record, record one, FQGN name. So let's save it. And go back to load balancer. So here, here we need to add one more listener as we are supposing to listen to for port uh, 443. It is for HTTPS. And uh, here we define that we will use SSL certificate for uh, encryption, decryption. And uh, as in previous listener, uh, instance port doesn't change. It's on 8080. So, now it seems to be ready. Let's save it. So we have added a certificate uh, file, we updated load balancer file, and we updated VARS file with DNS name. Uh, so let's apply the configuration. Terraform apply. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look at the uh, brackets. Mm -hmm. This is a bracket should be installed. And uh, now we will face this one more error. Mm -hmm. Okay, we need to add three resources. Let's have a look. First of all, we are going to add certificate. Uh, validate our certificate. Uh, and uh, road 53 record and attach it to load balancer. So let's go. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Here we go. And let's try our DNS name once again. And if you use HTTPS, okay, it works, but uh, why uh, the connection is not secure? Why this uh, information, we, can, we see this information? Uh, actually, uh, we, we have created certificate for DNS uh, name ihantala.link, but not for this FQDN. That's why our browser says us that it's not uh, a secure and we can pr proceed with this way. And if we uh, go to original DNS name ihantala.link, okay, it's site can't be reached to polls uh, dns name is not uh, reached my location yet we can check it okay, as you can see there is no ip address yet And if we still dig for this IP address, we will should be success. So we can see that there is IP address and we can log in can reach our service. So still there is no IP address. And here is the role that uh, DNS probe finished that means that uh, the computer didn't find uh, this IP address. I have an idea to change this propagation a little bit faster. Uh, I would suggest to uh, in, in destroy elastic load balancer and then uh, apply it once again. Sometimes it's, it propagates uh, quite fast, but sometimes very slow. So let's try it again. So while we are waiting, uh, what we can see, we can log in to our Jenkins by IP address, which is directly assigned to EC2 instance. The next options uh, uh, using uh, a DNS name of Elastic Load Balancer. 
the third option is actually secure options we use SSL uh, TLS encryption and with the uh, domain name of uh, elastic load balancer uh, let's log in Ah, we just recreated. And uh, why it doesn't work now? Because uh, we have just uh, destroyed Elastic Load Balancer and created it again. And we have another ELB DNS name. It is random one. So. It works, and let's wait for propagation of link. It has a record. Ah, no, it doesn't have a record still. I suppose we should wait a little bit. So uh, this information that is not secure, it's just uh, said that this certificate is not intended, it's not valid because it is uh, assigned uh, for another DNS name. But uh, instead, but uh, nevertheless, the connection is actually uh, is encrypted. Also. So I suppose we need just maybe three minutes uh, for propagating of DNS uh, names and let's revise what was the, what was done. Uh, uh, we have created uh, elastic load balancer uh, resource in AWS and we offload uh, a TLS uh, to elastic load balancer. So it received uh, a secure traffic and sent back to EC2 instance traffic HTTPS, no encryption here and here is encryption. And uh, we have created a certificate uh, and uh, assigned it using road 53 and uh, using uh, private DNS uh, record here. So, and the last check. No, still no IP address. Let's check it in. Uh, UI GUI.
So I will show you uh, that we have uh, ihantal dot link record name and uh, the value traffic attached to some and there is there is no a record created. Let's check our configuration. Here we have. Ah. Actually, we need to create one more resource. It's DNS. It's DNS record A, because you can see that we missed it. And here we uh, will use uh, road 50 zone main and attach uh, to record a uh, our name of uh, 
load balancer. So let's apply. So what is happening here? Uh, we are um, making uh, a record type A, which link uh, our um, DNS name to uh, load balancer DNS. Okay, that was successful. Uh, let's check it from the web console. Uh, refresh the page. Okay, now we can see that there is a new record type A and, and it links ehantalad what link to elastic load balancer DNS. Uh, so let's check. Link. But we need to wait. We need to wait, it's not fast. And finally, the road information was received. Uh, we can see IP addresses, uh, which uh, could be linked to our resource. And here we can go. And now uh, there is a HTTPS connection using certificate. And also we can use it without a certificate HTTPS, just uh, HTTP. Okay. And of course, we can use both of them, secure and non secure, and that's great. So now you know how to create a Jenkins instance inside cloud and create a secure load balancer, which will secure your traffic to Jenkins. And it's uh, it's a must for production environment. Uh, so that's all for today. Uh, thank you, guys. Do you have any questions? Yes. Yes, Sayed, you have, you have a hand raised, feel free to ask a question. Uh, can you uh, ask them in verbal if possible? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I pasted the questions in the chat. Mm -hmm. 
In real project, do we really need to secure the Gen Jenkins server since it's not our main application? What might be risk if not secure? So it depends on your project. Uh, so if uh, a security team requires uh, a secure connection and encryption, everything which is going between uh, a developer or DevOps and Jenkins. Uh, so there may be some um, sensitive data like passwords or something else. So it should better be secure. Uh, and the second question, do we have to change so DNS? So can mm -hmm. jump in regarding first question as well. So 99.99% .99 of cases, security team will say yes. Jenkins should be secure just like any other tool uh, that is used. HTTPS is a standard for any application, for any organization, and not a single security engineer will allow any unsecure HTTP connection to any service. It does not matter if it's uh, primary or not primary. So second question, uh, do we have to change DNS configuration that you added to for ihantala.link every time load balancer DNS changes or can we make it static dedicated? Uh, uh, so actually, uh, mm, I see your, your question is when uh, you recreating your load balancer, the DNS name uh, of load balancer will change. And uh, that's why DNS has to be changed also. Mm, of course, uh, if uh, the DNS name of load balancer will be changed, uh, we need to change uh, a record in DNS also as well. Okay, uh, got it. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So if there is uh, no more questions, we can finish our lesson.